Hey guys, it's me again, coming back with another Mortal Kombat 11 video, and it's going to be the final one. Um, it's basically just my final impressions on what I thought about the stress test now that it's over. It's been over for a couple days now. I'm just now getting around to this video. Um, so I guess we can just uh, get into um, basically what I liked first. We'll just talk briefly about what I liked. Um, I so generally the look in the art style of the game is its strongest its its strongest point. Uh the game looks phenomenal. It plays phenomenal. It feels really good. Uh it it does feel um I guess it feels uh kind of different from the rest of them. It does it really I guess the best way to describe it, it feels like uh, kind of the old 3D era of Mortal Kombat. They're like going back to um, a heavily neutral based footsie style of uh, play, and that's basically what uh, all the 3D era uh, Mortal Kombat games were kind of about. There wasn't really a lot of 50 50s back then. You basically just had to outspace your opponent and know the matchups and um, your combos, I guess. I guess combos in the old game had the you, you had to have superior combos so when you can you can capitalize on that damage when you did get in and you did hit someone um, uh, another thing I liked about the now this is just what I liked about the stress test um, I liked the, the, the characters they provided for us in the stress test I think um, they uh, and NetherRealm Studios kind of gave us the three characters and they all kind of played very different from one another and um, uh, Scorpion was kind of uh, uh, like the mid-range base character, while Scarlet was the keep-away character with a lot of zoning and uh, uh, like mid to long-range attacks. They had, they had good reach, and then Baraka was kind of just the in-your-face character. Um, he was definitely the rushdown character of the three, and uh, he definitely did the most damage. Uh, uh, all in all, I liked the fatalities. I liked the the production value. I liked uh, every every time I hit someone, it felt heavy. It felt strong. It felt like it felt good when I hit uh, the opponent with a lot of these combos. Um, uh, just generally, uh, the game animated very well, and uh, it was a lot of fun to play. So uh, it was just briefly what I liked about it. I did play around with uh, some other abilities with Scorpion. I did only play Scorpion the entire time in the stress test because um, he was really just the only character um, I had any any interest in. But uh, So let's get into, I guess, the negatives because there, there is a few I think we need to talk about here and I think uh, NetherRealm Studios needs to address before the final release of the game. Um, now, I'm not like pro-level player. I'm, I'm kind of like mid tier I guess I don't know what what you would call it I'm I'm good but not that good so uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, what I didn't like here uh, first and foremost the breakaway mechanic in this game um, kind of replaces uh, the classic Mortal Kombat breaker system and it kind of um, takes pages from injustice is playbook where like you kind of flip out of a combo instead of just breaking the combo in its entirety um, on both cases, both uh, the uh, the person who is doing the combo and the person who is doing the breaking away, it is too strong on both sides. Meaning that uh, when you can only break away when you're being launched, which is fine, because that's how it was in Injustice. You can only flip out of uh, uh, a combo when you're launched. Um, so the breakaway system, I, I guess in all seriousness, it's just kind of too strong on the defender side. You, you're kind of punishing uh, the person doing the combo for landing the combo, for actually getting in on footsies and neutral and uh, uh, making the better guesses. And um, you're, you're kind of punishing them for actually comboing the, the opponent. Uh, breakaway, it just it comes back so fast because it it, uh, it takes two bars of meter to to do a breakaway and basically you just fall out of the combo with like full armor and you can it, yeah you can just fall out of the combo with full armor it takes two bars and the bars come back very quickly uh, so you can kind of fall out of almost every combo that you're you're launched in um, and you can the, the recovery for breakaway is insane you can stand right back up and punish them for being stuck in an animation when they thought they were going to continue the combo 
and uh, you can basically counter combo their combo, so you're basically punishing the person who comboed first, and that's ridiculous. That shouldn't that shouldn't be a thing. Um, in all honesty, I think the breakaway mechanic is um, a little too flashy and a little too unnecessary. I think we should probably just go back to the regular combo breaker system, where it just it, it stops all animations on both sides, and everybody's back in neutral and on even footing, and we get back into the fight. Instead of the breakaway mechanic, you basically just break out in a corner um, and re-combo your opponent uh, for basically full damage. Uh, it's a little, it's a little insane. So, I, I, in in my opinion, I don't think breakaway is a very necessary mechanic. I don't think it's a very good mechanic in the state it's in right now, and I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, so. Um, speaking of meter, though, I talked about meter a little bit, and um, let's talk about meter in its entirety. So, when you start a match, both players have full meter. Both uh, the defense meters are filled, and both of the offense meters are filled. This, uh, this is n this is stupid, in my opinion. This is not a good a decision on NetherRealm Studios for doing this. Um, if you're if you're talking about a footsie in a neutral based game, having full resources right at the beginning, it basically it's whoever hits the other person first gets a basically a full combo. Um, I can't tell you how many times that um, Baraka got the the first hit of the match and he full comboed me for like thirty to forty percent damage. Oh, we'll get to him in a second. I got a lot to say about Baraka, but uh, I think that's kind of ridiculous. That's that's just insane. I don't think that's right off the start of the match. You'd be able to like full combo someone for both of your bars and and get maximum damage out of it, and then you're just like, well, why the fuck do I keep playing this round at this point? Uh, the other thing is, you still get first hit props. Like whoever hits the other person first, you get props for it, quote unquote, and it shows on the side of the screen. But it's like pointless. It it really serves no good purpose whatsoever. Um, to, to, to announce that they got props for the first hit because you don't benefit from getting the first hit. So it doesn't really matter who gets the first hit. At the end of the day, I don't even get the first hit. Um, I I kind of just back up at the start of the, uh, the fight and I kind of just play my 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 game, basically. I just, I just play my strategy and, and how I like to play the game, which is a lot of dead spin. Um, I think to uh, fix this, I think... Uh, so I guess on top of this as well that when you start with full meter the meter uh, is a passive cooldown it doesn't like you, you don't gain any more or any less meter for like uh, hitting the opponent on block like you would in the uh, the other games uh, you would gain meter in Mortal Kombat X for um, hitting your opponent while they're blocking and it would just give you a bonus for basically being on offense the entire time. And that, but, but that's just uh, a game that was heavily offense-based. It had a lot of 50-50 and a lot of problems with it. It was a very aggressive game. Not a lot of people liked it. So I think to fix this problem here is to give both uh, players one bar of each. One bar of offense, one bar of defense. And whoever hits the other person first gets the first hit props and gets the additional bar of offense but they still only have one bar of defense and the defense will um, will uh, cool down over time like it normally does and I think this will kind of alleviate this because uh, whoever gets first hit props can still I guess ah see now now I'm kind of second guessing myself now I may maybe thinking that uh, have one bar of defense and no bars of offense and the first hit props gets one bar of offense because uh, here we are again uh, here we are again in this problem whoever gets the first hit gets a full combo uh, a full damage combo and the person who's getting hit by this combo has no way of falling out of it no way of breaking away from it so yeah I think I think now that I think about it now that I'm, now that I'm talking about it and I'm speaking about it out loud um, I think both players should just start with one bar of defense and whoever gets first hit props should get that and then gets that bar of offense. I think that'll, that'll balance a lot of things because everything is just a passive cooldown. So unless they change that system in its entirety, which I don't think they will, and I don't honestly kind of don't think they should, 
um, I think we're always just going to have this problem. The first person who gets the first hit gets the full damage. So on top of um, on top of that, with the meter, maybe adjust the cooldown times for a lot of uh, the the resources to come back because it seems like the resources come back fairly quickly. So I'm uh, so I find myself just throwing out uh, amplified moves constantly without really any regret or without like being punished for it because they come back so quickly so there's just no point not to so I think I, I think uh, yeah just doing that with the meter making each player only start with one defense so they have like a way of maybe waking up you know right at the beginning of the match uh, and no one gets like a full damage combo right off the bat uh, moving on to movement Moving on to movement. Um, so movement in this game uh, is granted very slow. Uh, the dashing is abysmal. It's kind of useless. Walking in and walking out is the fastest way to get in and get out because it would actually be slower to dash in than it would be just to walk up to your opponent. Uh, I don't know who thought this was a good idea from Netherrealm Studios, and I'm not... Like I'm not trying to like attack them or anything, but uh, that was a it was a poor choice. It was a poor design decision. Uh, I don't know what you were trying to accomplish by making dashes completely useless in a fighting game, but um, you missed the mark. So uh, this one's just plain and simple: uh, make dashing better, because there are times, especially when uh, when Scorpion is fighting Scarlet, even though he has a teleport. Sometimes you just don't want to throw the teleport out because the opponent knows it's coming and they're baiting it. So to uh, to counter the bait, you want to you want to walk in or, or get in normally. Even okay, so I guess a better example would be Baraka trying to get on Scarlet. So Scarlet is keeping Baraka out, zoning him out, and the only way he gets in is to just kind of patiently move forward. If he doesn't have a good way of getting in, on like like a dash, like a good dash to kind of like dash under um, the projectiles, past the projectiles, uh, it's going to be a long road to get uh, mid-screen to where Scarlet's standing. And if a, it's a good Scarlet player, they can keep you out permanently. And I've seen good zoning uh, players. I uh, The one person who comes to mind uh, from Injustice, the Injustice Pro Series, was uh, Foxy Grandpa playing, uh, playing Deadshot. His keep-out game was insane. And if it's going to be something like that in this game, that's going to be a huge problem. And it, it yes, uh, Scorpion can teleport, but like I was trying to go on before, maybe they're baiting out the teleport so they can punish it, and you want to just get in normally. There's there's a lot of factors that go into just teleporting in, because sometimes it just, that's not an option. Sometimes just teleporting in isn't the option. And uh, yeah, uh, teleports can blow up uh, zoning real easily, but uh, if the zoner knows what they're doing, they're expecting it, and it, it just comes at it comes down to who's the better player. But it also comes down to how well the game is balanced between movement and zoning. If in Injustice you had a roll-in mechanic that you can use part of your resources to get in to get in fast, and I think they maybe should implement something like that here and maybe make the dashes a little better. Uh, this is not maybe this is not trying to like block out zoning entirely and make zoning impossible to do uh, This is kind of just alleviating the fact that uh, Scorpion and Baraka particularly Don't have very good zoning options when compared to Scarlet Scarlet zoning is incredibly strong uh, and Baraka with his just with his uh, With his blade sparks. That's not good enough to counter uh, uh, Scarlet zoning and uh, Scorpion has no zoning capabilities at all, uh, other than his other than his spear. And his spear isn't very good because if he whiffs it, or if it's hit on block, he's stuck in an animation for a good six seconds, unable to do anything. And that's a big problem. So this one was plain and simple movement. You got to adjust it. You got to give uh, the, the non-zoners more options to get in on the zoners or get in on people who are trying to zone you out. So talking about, let's talk about characters, because I have a lot to say about Scorpion and Baraka in particular. I didn't actually fight a lot of Scarlet players, so that one's still up in the air. But I'm sure people have, and sure people have played Scarlet, so they can 
you can go to one of their videos and they can probably uh, go into detail with Scarlet. But let's talk about Scorpion. Scorpion, all around, is a neutral base character. He 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 functions better in the mid range to close range. However, every single one of his strings is unsafe on block. That is insane. I don't know why they did this. I uh, maybe they overlooked it. Uh, but the fact that you can't check people with with any of his strings because if they block any of it, they can come back with a full punish, full combo punish is frustrating to say the least. You can even with even with sometimes in certain moves with Baraka, if he has that rushdown attack. Uh, where he like leaps across the screen and lifts you up on his blades. Uh, it's a you, everybody knows what it is. Uh, it's his like go-to counter punish. He can punish the amplified fire breath, which puts us puts both players back in a neutral area. That's he can uh, Baraka basically can punish anything Scorpion can do with that attack with that attack alone. Scorpion is very hard. Uh, to to play in that sort of in that sort of sense because nothing is plus on block he can't have continuous pressure however maybe it was just my internet connection but I highly doubt it I I don't think that uh, the frame data is right because I was getting punished for things that I shouldn't have been punished for uh, he also on top of him uh, every one of his strings being completely full punishable on block his damage sucks. His damage is the worst out of the three. His damage is abysmal. And he barely gets any damage even off of crushing blows. That's... I don't know. See, I'm going to have to wait for the full release to see, like, every other character's damage compared to him. But this feels like another Supergirl thing. Where he feels like he's just lacking in the damage where he shouldn't be. Like, none of his moves feel like they, they do a decent amount of damage, and I think the biggest combo I landed was about, uh, I think it was, like, only a 30% damage combo, and that was both bars. That shouldn't be a thing, either. I think, uh, Scorpion particularly needs to be adjusted. Uh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's unfair to say that he kind of needs a buff, especially when... All of his moves are pretty unsafe, and his damage is completely non-existent. But uh, that's about it for Scorpion. I guess we talk about Baraka, and Baraka... <laughs> I have a lot of problems with Baraka. Baraka... <laughs> he is a damage juggernaut in this build, particularly this build, the stress test. I just want just to emphasize this. It is the stress test only. This could change. I know that. But his damage is absolutely asinine. It's insane. He is plus on almost every one of his strings. It is hard to... It really is just hard to punish anything Baraka throws out. Because he's plus on a lot of stuff. Or he's safe on block. Or he, yeah, yeah, he's safe on block. Meaning that if he throws out a, a string... He can block before you can punish it, which is what that means for us, for your casuals out there. Uh, a lot of his strings, I think, uh, I don't, I don't remember any of his strings being able to be like full combo punished on block. Uh, that's not a good thing. That's 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 broken. That needs to be addressed. And um, his damage is absolutely insane. He is the like the easily the best damage out of the three characters that we got in the stress test i've seen combos upwards of 50 to 60 percent of your health bar with one combo no no that should never be a thing even with crushing blows well no actually that should be a thing with crushing blows but he wasn't using crushing blows so there's that I've seen 50 to 60% combo damage off a non-crushing blow. <laughs> That's crazy. That needs to be that needs to be addressed. It's just there's no way around it. It needs to be it needs to be re reworked. And he, back to the drawing board with him. Uh, but he's he's too safe and too plus on a lot of his strings. 
and he's got way too much damage off of things that aren't even crushing blowing. So I guess we can talk about characters as a whole. Uh, some abilities feel absolutely useless. I used a lot of Scorpion's abilities. Um, I used... Uh, the only thing I didn't use was his uh, teleport cancel. The only thing I I used... I didn't use was his teleport cancel. And it feels like unless you're using his uh, Sin Blade, I think it was, for pressure, because... Um, it just feels like everything else, the way his state is right now, because he's pretty unsafe on everything. Unless you're using his Sin Blade, it's his stance that you can equip. It's not. Um, it's not worth it. It, it just doesn't seem worth it. Uh, his Death Spin is the best, like ability in my opinion, and that's just because it can counter these insane jump ins, which I will talk about in a minute. But, um, but, uh, some abilities need to be adjusted, they need to be feel, they need to feel more, like, worth, uh, equipping. And Death Spin in particular doesn't feel like it's worth the two places, the, like, the, the two spaces in the customization menu that it is. Um, it's very unsafe on block. You can get punished, or it might be safe. But uh, it feels like it can get punished out pretty quickly, pretty easily about with everything. And it doesn't really do a lot of damage. It does a lot. It has good chip, but the damage isn't really that great either. Uh, the scaling on it is really bad. So uh, the fact that it's, it's, it takes up two customization slots is, uh, I think, it, feel, it feels very unnecessary. And that would mean if you want to get like the two customization slots for Death Spin and then the Death Spin, like the new Harpoon combo, uh, that means you can't get anything else like the Fire Breath or like the Dash. And it's just, it, it feels like they're just purposely crippling Scorpion when they don't have to. Um, that I, I can only really talk about Scorpion because I only played Scorpion. So if anybody else has like other comments about the abilities and how useless they are, you can just leave them in the comments below. Uh, so we're going to talk about jump-ins because I touched on it a little bit. Um, jump-ins are a little bit of both sides of the coin right now. They're either really strong or not strong enough. So um, Baraka's jump-in four is stupid. It's stupid good because it's, I, I've never been able to anti-air it unless I'm using dead, dead spin. But if I don't have Dead Spin equipped, I, I just have to eat it, basically, because there's no way to counter it. Uh, but Scorpion's Jump In 4 can be easily down toed by uh, the other members of the cast. Easily down toed. Easily counter, but uh, anti aired would down two. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so, yeah, they're too strong or not good enough. And down twos that are unpunish uh, unpunishable on block in this game. No. Don't do that. Don't The pushback is too much. Uh, I would suggest um, finding a different way to balance that. It shouldn't be unpunishable on block. Uh, so jump ins are too strong and down twos when they whiff when they whiff I think they could be punished just fine but when um, down twos hit on block, they they put each player in a reset. Like they they it's a it's got like a lot of pushback and you you can't punish it on block and I think that's a mistake. Um, there is just there's just a few things in this in this build particularly that I don't know what they were going for, but uh, they should probably revise it and uh, and look into it. But I think that was the purpose of this stress test. And the purpose of the beta that's coming out, uh, I think either this weekend or the following weekend, um, that that they need to test who's stronger and what and what and uh, characters need to be either nerfed, buffed, you know, what have you. Uh, but I think that's it. Um, oh, uh, the interactable on uh, Shang Tsung's Island Ruins. There's a, there's a wall jump interactable that a lot of people are reporting on this, but I'm going to report on it as well. It is broken. It 
it is just straight up broken. Uh, every time someone runs up that wall and does a dive kick off it, it is completely unpunishable. It, and it is so strong. You basically have to block it. You can't counter it. There's just, there's no way around it. Uh, it has, it's basically almost invincible. So, there's that. But I think that's it. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, other than that, I think the game is in great shape. I'm kind of excited to see uh, what the other characters have to offer. I was definitely never excited to play a Sub-Zero before, but uh, until uh, recently this game and Injustice 2, I'm really excited to uh, play Sub-Zero and see uh, how he fares compared to everybody else on the roster. I'm excited to see more character reveals for the combat cast. Um, this game is still going to be my probably number one for the year. Uh, as long as they address these issues that are kind of just silly, minute issues that they can, that they should be able to easily fix. Oh, and if I can, one more comment about uh, the Amplify moves. If they could put in, they can uh, put in the, the Amplified like, inputs instead of like a universal button or have an option to be able to pick one or the other. Um, I would, I would, I would greatly appreciate that. I would like to see something like that. I would like to see, or play the game how it was at the reveal event, and feel the difference, and see which one I like. Um, but having both options shouldn't. That, that, having more options never hurts. But uh, all right, that's it. I'm done rambling. It's gone on long enough. Uh, thank you guys, and I will see you in the next one, or when the beta comes out. Hope to get. Hope to see everybody there.